Okay, Mr. Gunther, just about uh, ready to take you upstairs for surgery. I'm ready too. I told you before the cancer is confined to your right superior lung, so it should be pretty straightforward getting it out. Do you have any questions before we go up? Let's pray. Would you two join us? Absolutely. Would you like to lead us in prayer, Dr. Sands? Oh. Yeah, I thought this was the silent, reflective type of thing. No. Okay. Uh, bountiful Lord, please grant that uh, Mark have a successful procedure. Please bless his lung. And speed thy blessed scalpel on its righteous path. Amen. 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 You two don't pray very much, do you? <laughs> <laughs> Mark, can you hear me? Mm. Hi. Hello. There he is. What's going on? Well, the good news is we got all the cancer out. Uh, during the procedure, you went into cardiac arrest, which is actually not uncommon. Fortunately, we were able to restart your heart. After three minutes of, well, let's just call it death. Wait, I, wait, I died for three minutes. I know this is strange, Mr. Gunther, but just try and take it easy. You know, I, I couldn't have died. I didn't see the light. I'm sorry? You know, the light, the tunnel, it wasn't there. You see the tunnel because your soul is getting ready to go home to God. And I saw nothing. Zero. Honey, you're lucky. It wasn't your time yet. If it wasn't my time, then God should have been there to say, hey, Mark, guess what? It's not your time. Sweetheart, it's not for us to say what his plan is. Bull crap. I waited around for three minutes. Where was he? How about I go get the chaplain? What would I do with the whole pig? You know, think about if you were gonna have a party. A whole roast pig could really wow your guests. <laughs> Thanks, but uh, no. What's going on with Mr. Gunther? Uh, technically he died for a few minutes and we didn't get the whole white light tunnel treatment, he kind of freaked out. Uh, didn't get the floor show. Missed out on the whole IMAX experience, got it? Yeah, he's really upset. Not my first time at the rodeo. I'll drop a little purpose-driven life on him. We'll be straightened out in no time. Oh, 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 oh what okay. the hell was that for, you okay. son of a bitch? For peddling oh. lies. There's nothing on the other side, you okay. big liar. Let me see. Whoa, 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 take it easy. You take it easy, big eyes. Honey, we do not hit, especially not a man of oh. God. Well, guess what, honey? There is no God. Sorry to be the one to break it to you, but it's all a sham. You broke his nose. You don't mean that. Mm. You broke his nose. I hope you're proud of yourself. I think you need to go down to the ER. I'll pray for you. Yeah, that'll fix everything. Thanks a bunch. Nice work. What is your problem? What is my problem? My problem is that my whole life, no matter what lousy thing befell me, I said, God's got a plan. Got laid off, even though I was the best accountant in my firm, God's got a plan. Spent 10 years trying to have children, but I couldn't, because I apparently have lazy sperm. God's got a plan. I never smoked a day in my life, but I still somehow got lung cancer. God's got a plan, and then I die. And guess what? There's no God. So you know what that means? There's no plan. And since life is apparently meaningless, I guess we should just do whatever we want. That's right, you should, as soon as you're out of my hospital. You can bite, but you just have to be careful. Well, biting's at the What are you doing? No, no hookers in the hospital. Okay, great, look, my ad clearly states that I'm a masseuse. Mark, you're married. I am a man, okay? I have appetites. I've been starving oh. myself for a god that doesn't exist, and now it is time to feed the beast. I want to say dirty words and, like, smoke some drugs and have filthy, dirty, gross hooker sex. Hey! Well, you're not doing it here. Okay. Come on, Lainey. Let's go. I'm not going to charge you for the hour, but you do owe me for the vodka and cab fare. I'll catch you later, sexy lady. You look ridiculous. You're not even doing it right. I know. I'm not a very good rebel. Those things taste awful, by the way. You know, I used to think that if I just listened hard enough, 
I could hear God's voice, you know, just consoling me when I was afraid, encouraging me when I was weak. Now I understand. I was just talking to myself. There's nobody out there. We're all alone. And I just, I find that terribly disappointing. They have your wife. My wife is very upset with me about the hooker thing. She's, she's upset. I lost my faith too, you know. I went to war and I saw some things and then I just could not get with God anymore. So what do you believe now? I think that God's in people. I think that the devil is in people too. I had this soldier laid out on me on his 19th birthday. You could tell that he was a good boy. Like one of my brothers, maybe. I held his hand while he was dying. All I could think was who could point their gun at this boy and pull the trigger? How can we do that to each other? But you know what one of his buddies told me? He ran into the shooting to save this little girl. Who has that kind of courage and grace at 19 years old? That's miraculous to me. Maybe that's enough. I still miss God. Me too.